from uh, Paris uh, here at uh, France 24. Okay, let's move on to uh, tonight's uh, debate. Afghanistan. French troops there now number almost uh, 3,000. Uh, 36 French soldiers, of course, have lost their lives since Operation Enduring Freedom began. President Nicolas Sarkozy's move to fully integrate France into NATO, uh, reversing the stance uh, once taken by Charles de Gaulle back in the 1960s, has put even more emphasis uh, on the role that French troops uh, are playing in the campaign in Afghanistan. Now, our reporters have been following French troops in the Kapisa province. Uh, we'll be uh, looking at that report uh, in a moment. After that, our guests here in the studio, our guests are Hall Gardner from the American University of Paris and Pierre Conessa from uh, the uh, CES, uh, Compagnie Européenne d'Intelligence Stratégique. They'll be discussing the issues, of course, that arise from our report. So let's get straight on with that then and look at the report uh, led by uh, Luca Manger, our international affairs correspondent. <laughs> In a few months' time, the International Coalition's occupation of Afghanistan will have lasted as long as the Soviet one, eight and a half years. The Soviets used to fly over these valleys in helicopters before pulling out of the country vanquished. Since 2001, Western armies have pursued insurgents across these mountains and valleys. Among them, just over 3,000 French soldiers deployed in the name of the struggle for democracy. Officially, it's not a war just a counter-insurrection struggle, but the soldiers fight, they get wounded, and more and more die. Nidra base north of the Kapisa Valley. For the past five months, this Breton regiment based in Van has been deployed here. It may not be war, but it certainly looks like it. It's a long time since the French army has faced a challenge like this. It might sound stupid, but I think this compares to Algeria or Yugoslavia. Today's army, the army that I know, is not really used to this kind of situation. We have to adapt quickly. Tony is one of the most decorated staff sergeants in the French military, a man respected by his men. They are known as Marsouin, or porpoises, marine infantry. Tony is a hands-on leader. He adapts to the surroundings and expects his men to do the same. He doesn't wonder if the war can be won. He just fights. The war is the day-to-day -day reality of the base at the foot of the 1,800-metre high Hindu Kush mountains. Inherited from the Americans, the base is now home to more than 1,000 French troops. The FOB, as it is still known by its American name, is in it for the long haul. It's from here that all operations for the region are directed. Among the soldiers, more than 300 from the 3rd Infantry Regiment. They're the soldiers of Forban Section 4. There are 35 of them and form a combat section. All are aged between 20 and 29. This is their chief, Lieutenant Olivier. We're not allowed to give his family name, but he's 29 years old. Every evening at 6.30, it's briefing. Tonight, a code name is announced, Operation Stairway. There will be just one contact. If they come, they'll meet one of sections 4, 3 or 1. Once they've launched their rockets, they'll clear off, so we must not miss the engagement. In this maneuver, engagement is the initiative of the section chief. The captain has laid a trap for the Taliban. A few hours from now, a deployment of 300 men is to try to dislodge a nest of insurgents in a neighbouring valley, the Afghania. That's all. Any more questions? Operations such as these happen at most once a month. Night falls early in October. In the soldiers' mess, it's one beer per man per day. But this one, the last before battle, has an extra special taste. In five months, seven soldiers from the base have died and 35 been injured during operations like that due to start during the night. Tony is one of the section chiefs. His objective is to bring everyone home alive. 5.15 a.m., the village of Maktab, the gateway to the Afghania Valley. Forban Section 4 of the 3rd Marine Infantry Regiment emerges from its armoured vehicles. Day has broken, the village still sleeps, which suits the men well as they can go about their business quickly and discreetly. 
This is Bogo, a sharpshooter armed with an FRF-2, a rifle which dates from the Algerian war and which the French army has yet to improve on. The section has been patrolling the valley for months, but the insurgents still know it better. The mission relies on Gini reconnaissance intel about this axis that goes through the valley. We're going to have to protect it on the right between the wadi and the road. So we're going to have to enter the wooded areas in front of us. The wadi is the riverbed they're going to follow, forever on guard. When you disengage and return to base, you have to turn your back on them, probably by the edge of this scrubland here. That's where a lot of the harrying comes from, from RPGs. He's never far from the lieutenant. In the section he's known as GG. He's the youngest, the radio operator. He's the link between the section and operation command. The section advances swiftly. It's five kilometers to the other end of the valley. But they stop regularly to observe the locals who are just beginning to stir. The men observe, but they also know they too are being watched. The inhabitants of the valley are used to the soldiers' presence, but they're also in contact with the insurgents. The armory is heavy, prepared for battle. Each soldier carries a pack weighing 30 kilos with ammunition and food supplies. They never know exactly what's going to happen. They're better having too much than too little. In the skies, the soldiers are backed up and fed intelligence by drones, those almost invisible unmanned planes, and by helicopters. And on the heights, other sections keep watch. We're not alone. The other company is up on the heights to see everything that's going on. They're lookouts, in effect. They see everything that's going on. If there are people infiltrating the wadi, for example, they see everything we can't see. There are also special forces who have their informants in the villages and who have known for a few days that the Taliban are also preparing for battle. Attention all units, HCT-19 Intel. 50 insurgents preparing an ambush in the valley. Region for the moment not communicated. On the radio, information becomes more precise. The enemy combatants take their positions, and the Marines acknowledge the Taliban's are there in numbers too. Move a little to the left if you can. The whole unit is on the alert. The Tigers' French combat helicopters fly over the area to try and locate the insurgents. But the insurgents too have their network of informants, often farmers, who count the number of French soldiers. Bogo and his comrades feel they are being observed spied on. See them over there, staring at us? I'm convinced they've been assigned us. He's not moving? No, he's not moving. After we're gone, they'll be informing on us, informing the enemy. The soldiers cannot afford to let the Taliban steal a march on them. Even if all eventualities are planned for, it looks as if the Taliban trap is working a bit too well. The soldiers themselves begin to feel they are surrounded. All units, confirmation of the presence of the Taliban in the valley. They've received their orders and are in the process of splitting up in small groups to organize their ambush. The insurrection leaders have also laid their trap. For the moment, the lieutenant is confident.